In Sydney, the lineup began. So we've been waiting since yesterday at 12 o'clock. Even before the official announcement in the US. These are the new iPhones. Bigger screens and faster speeds. They're behind the curve on the size. Something we've seen before. Can they win back some of the Android users of today that used to be Apple adopters? Apple's iOS operating system trails Android's global market share. Technology analysts at the Cupertino launch said the atmosphere was vibrant. It was the one more thing that really tipped people over the edge. They haven't heard that for so many years. That one more thing? The Apple Watch. It's a new category of product and I think it's going to be tremendous. You can track your fitness on it in an 18 karat gold case, but not until next year when it's released. Well, I think it appeals to a very, very wide demographic. Citigroup analysts predict the smart watch market, which rivals Samsung dominates, will be worth $10 billion. Investors, though, were more pleased about Apple's move into the mobile device payment category. That's something that we think has some pretty significant potential. The ability to tap and pay with your iPhone. We haven't seen NFC usage take off in any meaningful way. Except in Australia, where NFC, or Near Field Communications Payments, are popular. Around 50% of Visa and MasterCard transactions under $100 are made using tap and go cards. Having the technology built into mobile devices like the iPhone will make it even more accessible even if they are already available on some other devices. That marketing juggernaut of Apple will, will help to increase the use of contactless payments here in Australia. That will increase competition in that space. Shares of PayPal parent eBay fell nearly 3% in New York. Wow, that's instant gratification. Ricardo Gonsalves, SBS World News.